Greetings, this is Oddcast episode 9, and I'm in a new studio in Scotland. Most people who subscribe to this channel at the moment uh, know me personally, so you're probably aware that I've moved to Scotland and I am not currently working for any other organisation than myself. One of the things that's going to allow me to do is do projects and talk fully about exactly what's going on. So I, I would, in some senses, have liked to talk about exactly what happens in a project run by someone else's business, but it's not possible to do that because, uh, you know, they're not my secrets to tell, they're owned by the company. My intent is to walk you through two R&D projects that I'm working on, and I will tell you what decisions I make and why, what avenues I decide to explore, which I am aware I've chosen not to explore, and why I want to do it live so that it's obvious that I am not cheating <laughs> that I'm not giving you a rosy coloured picture of how a project goes, I'm giving you the, the what really happens. Even the act of speaking about my decisions live is going to cause me to inspect my decisions perhaps more than I naturally would in a normal project and that may change the outcomes and I can't correct for that. I wanted to do this as the, the <laughs> most realistic view that I think it's possible for me to give you into how I really do a project and, and what that means. I will tell you the broad concept of the projects, which is at this point limited to the space in which they operate. So as I said, these are what I would call R&D research and development projects. And the way they, such a project originates is with a, it's little more than a hunch really that in some area it's possible to do some work and that that might result in an improvement that is useful. Now in this case because I am doing things uh, on my own initiative and with myself as the only master what useful means is that I think it could be useful enough to the rest of the world uh, to be a reasonable way to use my time. In a business context, what useful means typically means it will uh, increase profits by either increasing your chances of getting paid or reducing your cost basis. There's a difference between those stakes. Um, obviously, I'll leave it to you to decide whether I care more about improving the world or uh, making profits for the company I work for, um, and whether that might affect my motivations or decision making. I'll try to be honest about that. Uh, I suspect to the extent it makes a difference, it's more likely that I will persist with either or both of these projects um, past the point where if I was trying to do it to make or save money, I would have regarded it as a unlikely venture. So I want to be clear about that, that I'm going to make the decisions in the context that exists. I'm not going to try and pretend that this is a, either of these is a commercial endeavor. One of the projects is in the area of electric guitars and their manufacture. And the other project is in the area of um, the C++ language um, fundamentals. We are way too early in either project to talk about what the product at the end of it is. In a sense, the best case scenario outcome for the C++ project is that it results eventually in writing some papers 
interacting with the C++ standards committee members to refine those papers and ultimately changes to the C++ standard in probably C++ 33 is the earliest I would expect to get this finished by. So this is minimum a nine year project and um, I start it knowing that if it works that's how long it's going to take and I'm fine with that. The other one on electric guitar manufacture there's um, multiple ways that could end with having something useful come out of it and it obviously either of these could end with a conclusion that I've done the research and development to establish what I can do and the answer is I, I don't believe I can contribute anything truly useful um, and so it's over. I, I realise I've been extremely vague in, in describing both those projects. That's intentional. I want to do a what would be in the real project kickoff meeting um, for both of those. That will be the next two videos and then we'll get into the R&D part of each project. The pacing is going to be as it happens. There may be frenetic part periods of activity on either or both of the projects and there may be months where nothing particularly advances. It's going to be dominated by the nature of reality and um, I don't want to make a promise that I can't keep. There might be questions you would not have asked me previously because I was uh, full-time employed or employed by some company and that you might feel comfortable asking me those now. Um, please ask them. The change in my situation doesn't have any real effect on the answers I'm able to give. I'll be clear about that. So, you know, the confidentiality um, obligations that I had before are still in place. I don't believe there are questions I will be able to answer now that I couldn't answer before and I don't believe there will be any fundamental difference in the uh, answers. I am merely labouring this point because I do suspect that there might be differences in the questions you feel like you can ask. Next video will be kickoff for the guitar project, that will be episode 11, episode 13 will be kickoff for the C++ uh, project which will probably be a considerably longer video. The future videos it's likely to be more screen capture and um, it may be necessary to see what's on the screen for things to make sense from time to time um, if I'm describing the interaction of mechanical components in 3D space for the guitar project I can show you that rendered in my CAD software and I can't really verbally describe it in sufficient detail and likewise when I'm talking about possibilities for syntax in C++ programs in the future I can will endeavor to <laughs> describe that verbally but to some extent it's likely to devolve into do we prefer this or this or this and um, again this is this is not something that's um, that there's much I can do about it. I just want to be clear with uh, everyone about the nature of reality. I apologize for the lengthy interval between episode seven and nine. Um, that was due to life. <laughs> you know, m me relocating from New York to Scotland was a large part of that. Thank you for your patience and for listening. And if you stay with me on the journey through these projects, projects. I hope it is useful to you. Cheerio.